Hi everyone, I'm Jack and today I am alone. Unfortunately, Luke couldn't be here today, so I'm going to be doing today's podcast by myself. So please bear with me. Uh, I have a bit of a different topic today. Now, what we're going to do today, yesterday, I, I sent out a message on my social media and I said, hi everyone, please ask me your questions for tomorrow's podcast. So today I'm going to do a kind of Q&A by myself, answering some questions I got from my social media, particularly Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, etc. So for the next sort of 10 or 15 minutes, I'll be answering your questions and hopefully giving you some advice about English and how to study, etc. So you'll be listening to just me today. I hope we can keep this interesting. I'll try to give you lots of meaningful material. So let's get started. Now, uh, I'm going to do this in no particular order and uh, I'll include as many questions as I can over the course of this podcast, but they will require quite long answers. So we're going to start with a question from Yaman Bademir. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, I got a question from Yaman and he asked me, Jack, should I watch English content with subtitles? Should I watch English content with subtitles? Now, this really depends on your goals. Um, what are you trying to improve in your English? If you're trying to, it also depends on your level as well, but if you're trying to improve your listening, even if you're quite a low level, I would recommend don't use subtitles at least on the first viewing. So, because, and this is something I've talked about a lot before, when I learned Korean, one of the best things I ever did was listen to the radio. That's the hardest thing I'm sure you know. Listening to the radio is very quick, all the content is new, and you have no subtitles. So I would say to you, if you are trying to improve your listening, don't use subtitles. You can kind of create this environment which is like having a real conversation in a foreign country. Um, now, if your goal is sort of language analysis and trying to learn structures and vocabulary, then I would say to you, yes, make the most of English subtitles. Um, English subtitles will allow you to pause and see the structure, copy the structure. You can use it for shadowing. So in that sense, English subtitles can be really beneficial. Um, the final thing that I sometimes get asked is, well, how about my own language's subtitles? I would say to you, make that the last step. The last step is, you know, to just check you understand everything okay, then put on your own language's subtitles and uh, just check it with that. Um, but that should always be the last step. Don't do that at the start. So there you go, Yaman. Thank you for your question. I really appreciate it. Uh, I hope that helped. Let's go to someone different. Uh, um... Well, let's go with, uh, we've got here uh, a question from Melissa Park um, and she's asked me the following question. What is the polite way to ask how to go somewhere? Should I say, excuse me, could, would? Okay, thanks for your question, Melissa. Um, it is a confusing one because of course you want to be polite. So the first thing you have to think is, well, I need a polite structure. So um, just remember when you're asking this question to someone on the street, you need a favor, you need something from them. So the structure that should come to your mind is, could you tell me could you tell me? Um, the reason for this is, as I said, you want something from them. You want a favor. So in that case, we say, could you verb? You know, could you open the window? You need someone to open the window for you. So 
Could you tell me how to go or how to get to place? So, for example, you need to find uh, Gangnam Station. Excuse me. So always start. Excuse me. That gets their attention. Excuse me. Could you tell me how to get to Gangnam Station? Alternatively, could you tell me how to find Gangnam Station? So that's the structure. Just always use that. If you want to be a little bit more polite, um, but it's not necessary. That's fine. You could say, "Would you mind telling me?" Same after that. So, would you mind telling me how to get to Gangnam Station? Um, so that would be, I would say, even more polite, but unnecessary. I would always say, "Could you? Could you tell me?" Okay. So, thanks for that question, Melissa. Um, obviously. You asked for the polite way, and that's absolutely what you should try and do. Use the polite way with strangers in the street. Okay, let's go to something a bit different. So, uh, forever Lynn baby, forever Lynn baby. She asked me on Instagram. <clears throat> she said, "Cultural differences. How do you adapt to a new environment or culture?" Okay. Well, by the way, I haven't prepared my answers, so I'm kind of freestyling.、Um, obviously, this is not English related, but I'll, I'll tell you from my perspective how to adapt to a new culture. I think particularly is important.、Um, I think immersion is very important. Immerse yourself in the culture. So, as you probably know, or perhaps there's some new listeners who don't know. I'm based in South Korea. I live in South Korea, and I came here ten years ago. And when I first came here, I felt like an alien. It's a very different country,、um, and scary. You know, there's a lot of differences, and, and it's、uh, you know you're always nervous about making a mistake, or you're perhaps upset about something that someone else does. So you know the the quickest way to to kind of overcome that difficulty is immersion. Try to experience as many things as you can. Try to get friends from that country. Don't you know a lot of people stay within their group of people from their country, or they live in the area of a city where their country people live.、Um, So for me personally, I tried not to do that. I lived in a very Korean environment.、Um, I quickly had Korean friends, and I learned the hard way.、Uh, I often, you know, had to learn lessons by making mistakes. But that way, you can quickly immerse yourself in a new culture and make yourself more comfortable with it.、Um, but also, don't forget, and this was really important for me, is. When you're immersing yourself, don't forget to to remind yourself of your own culture and and to give yourself treats from back home. You know, one of the best things I learned to do was to sometimes cook British food at home. You know, make a shepherd's pie, make a fish pie, and enjoy it with friends, and and it kind of brings back that feeling of home,、um, which obviously you you probably miss. So. Yeah, I guess、uh, a combination of immersion、um, and sort of reminders of your home culture, your home country. So thanks for that question, Forever Lin Baby.、Um, a bit more of a serious question here from Harjut underscore two underscore one, and、uh, he, I think it's a he,、uh, told me, tell me about speaking mod- modules. And how to increase bands? Tell me about speaking modules and how to increase bands.、Um, I assume that you're talking about IELTS,、um, based on the language you used in that.、Uh, it, it seems that you're talking about IELTS. So I'll give you a little bit of advice on how to increase your bands in IELTS. And you're talking about the speaking exam. Now, I do teach IELTS. Uh, I do most of my work in writing, so most of my tips and advice are regarding writing. But、um, in terms of speaking,、um, just remember there are four areas that you are graded on. You're graded on fluency and coherence, which is 
you know, the way that you structure whole sentences and the way you deliver your message, are you clear in your delivery? Lexical resource, that's your, basically your vocabulary. What vocabulary are you using? Um, you've got grammar, accuracy, and also range, uh, range and accuracy. Uh, and then finally, pronunciation. So, you know, the way I work with students is we look at the way they answer questions and, and break things down within those four areas. Um, and, and just ask yourself questions. Try to get yourself a list of descriptors to see, okay, what do I need for band five? What do I need for band six, band seven? And ask yourself questions. Am I delivering my message without too many pauses and repetition? If you are very, are you, if you're stuttering or you're pausing a lot um, or you're, you know, repeating your ideas and it's, it's not a clear message, then you've got to take a serious look at fluency and coherence. Um, look at your vocabulary. Are you using topic specific vocabulary? If not, maybe your vocabulary is too basic and you're going to be giving, given a level six. Um, maybe you're making too many mistakes with your vocabulary and you'll be put down to even a level five. Grammar range and accuracy. Um, again, it's, you can approach it in the same way. You know, are you making serious mistakes? Then probably you're going to be like a low six or, or even a five if you're making serious mistakes. Um, sometimes I hear my students using tenses wrongly or, um, you know, the passive voice, that was something I've been dealing with recently. Um, and then as you go up to level sort of high six or seven or e even eight, you've got to be getting that grammatical range. You know, you've got to have an interesting set of complex structures uh, and, uh, the tenses that are required for, for expressing that idea. And then finally, pronunciation. Pronunciation, you know, really, can you understand what you're saying? I mean, obviously, it's easier for you to listen to your recording, um, but if you can get someone else's opinion, is it understandable? That's the key thing. If you're, if you're making it difficult to understand with your pronunciation mistakes then there you will get penalized. Um, and that brings me on to my final thing is, you know, when you're analyzing these things, try to record your answer. Try to do a mock test, record the audio, and then look back at the audio and think, okay, what did I do wrong? Uh, what can I improve? So I hope that helps you, Harjit uh, underscore two underscore one. Thank you for your question. Uh, let's, uh, time is actually flying. It's incredible how, how quickly time goes. Um, so let's, uh, at least get one more in. Now I'm going to be a bit picky with, uh, the remaining questions. Um, I'll go with this one here. So it's another English speaking, you know, how to improve my speaking. And it's from I poll Cole, I poll Cole, um, this is also from Instagram and he or she asked me, how can I practice my English without having a speaking partner? Uh, this is something I've covered a lot um, because it's so common. It's so, so common. So firstly, if you have this problem, you're not alone. It's just really a lot of people in their country don't have the opportunity to have a, a partner to practice with. Um, so obviously, First step is, is try to find groups, but let's assume that you can't find a group. Um, so the first thing I, I say is when you study um, English, try to do a lot of things vocally. You know, if you're studying some structures or vocabulary, be very vocal in your study. Say things aloud. If you do an example sentence, don't just write it down. A lot of my students just write verbalize it. Um, you've got to get your mouth moving. You've got to get yourself used to actually speaking. That's the first thing. And the second thing I would say, and I've said it a million times, is the verbal diary. At the end of the day, 
doesn't have to be a diary. Um, it just needs to be some period of natural speaking alone. Record yourself. You know, maybe you talk about your day. Maybe you practice um, a presentation that you need to do. Uh, maybe you're just making voice notes. But make sure as a, on a daily ba basis that you are speaking with the language, being active with it. And on top of that, as I said, record it. It's free. You know, you can record yourself and listen back to it and, and kind of critique what you have done. Um, I think that's a really beneficial thing to do, but it's a habit. So, you know, try to, try to make that habit and keep to it. So thank you, iPoll Cole from Instagram, and thank you to everyone for your questions. I think I could only cover five or six, but uh, I hope it was beneficial to you who are listening or watching this on YouTube. Um, of course, if you're listening to this and you're watching on YouTube and you have any questions, ask me below and I'll get back to you. If you're listening on uh, whatever it is, iTunes, um, or anchor. Thank you for listening firstly and uh, you know please leave a review we really appreciate that uh, and I'll be back next time uh, hopefully with my partner because it's very lonely here by myself. So I hope you did enjoy this episode and uh, we will be back the two of us uh, very soon with some more interesting topics. Thanks for listening and thanks for watching. See you very soon. Bye-bye.